Welcome to the Plant Centered and Thriving Podcast. I'm your host, Ashley Kitchens. What's up, Plant Centered listener? I am so glad you're here today. I am beaming because today's episode is incredibly organic, transparent. I just have a really special guest on the show. His name is Mitch Gill. And to be honest, he actually reached out on Messenger. He had said some kind words about the podcast and he gave me a glimpse into his whole food plant-based journey. And I share this a little bit in our episode here in a second in our interview, but I was like, we have to have Mitch on because he just has such a unique story and he's incredibly gregarious and he's a comedian. And I just think you're really going to appreciate just the transparency that transpired here during our conversation. So Mitch was actually a radio DJ for 13 years. Several of those years, he was a morning host and he is a paper boy or rather a paper man. And he's also DJed hundreds of weddings. Mitch is from Michigan. His comedy is quirky and observational. And in fact, we have the link to his comedy club below or that way, if you're curious to check him out. If you're in Michigan, which I understand is the thumb of Michigan is where he lives. You can go check him out. So things Mitch quits are gluten, drinking, marriage, meat, dairy, and eggs. And there's gotta be a joke in there somewhere. He says, so I, again, this, like I said, this conversation is really just him and I having a friendly conversation about being plant-based, the struggles that arise, how, Our food system isn't necessarily set up to fuel healthy, joyful lives. And I'm not going to lie. This conversation was incredibly refreshing and I hope you get some laughs like I did. And I hope you enjoy just the, again, the candidness in how we went back and forth about various topics. We also talk about resources. We talk about various documentaries that have been really important part of his journey. We talk about important books and how it's really helpful to educate yourself, especially when you're new to plant-based eating and how it's a great reminder when you are plant-based, but you know what? I'm going to stop talking because I really want you to hear our interview. So please join me in welcoming Mitch to the show. And we're just going to jump right in. In your opening statement where you say stories are the best way to get people to believe Yes. Whatever there is. I can't agree with you more. And that's part of the reason that that encouraged me to contact you to say, I'd like the people to hear my story. Yes. Because, okay, you listened to one of our episodes from the Veg Fest. And oh, I loved it. You had such kind words to say about that. And then you gave me a snippet of your story. And I was like, oh my goodness. You're like, if you'll have me, I'm like, have you? You are definitely coming on the podcast. <laughs> if you did, uh, if you w- went on the road to a couple different veg fests across the country and collected nothing but actualities from those and strung an hour's worth together from yeah. each one and just played them. I was out working in my garage on my garage sale and, you know, compiling stuff. I listened to that episode like three times oh, wow. because it was, it was, it was almost emotional because I'm yeah. hearing everything that these people are saying that I went through. Yes. Um, yeah. Because it's, re- it's really powerful. Yep. Yeah, it's powerful. It's relatable. And I remember someone saying to me one time that you can show someone a hundred research papers, but that's going to do nothing in comparison to one single story. And yep. that's why I felt like more people just need to hear other people's stories like yourself, which I can't wait to dive into because I think <laughs> it ha- it can have such a lasting impact on your choices and your life. Yeah, I could not agree more. It's like Dr. Uh, Dr. Gregor yeah. opens- opens how not to die with the story of his grandmother Yes, yep. who was going to die. Doctor said, get your act together. Cause you're checking out in weeks. Yep. And then she finds out about uh Pritikin out in California who wasn't even a doctor. He was an engineer. She goes out to California and checks in with this guy to live with him for whatever, a few weeks turns her diet around and then she's walking like five miles a day, yes. five or 10 miles a day in two weeks. Yeah. Yeah. And she was supposed to die. She lived 31 more years. And that story stuck with me. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, I heard him mention it somewhere and then I finally got it. I love this book. I'm 300. Yes. I'm uh, on page 312 right now. Oh, wow. I mean, it is an <laughs> intense book. It's, it's full a great of, book. Yeah. It's so good. You can open it anywhere and start mm-hmm. reading, yes. but I'm, I'm going to read it right from the very beginning. So. Yeah. 
And I think it was, was it his mom who, I think she was, or grandma who was wheeled into that facility and then she's yeah. walking out or something and she's like on oxygen and just a yeah, complete she, 180. Within two weeks, she was walking, like out walking five miles a day when she came in in a wheelchair Yeah, because of right. heart disease. Yep. And, uh, and here, Dr. Gregor's 11 years old and he's seeing this and he says, that said, I'm dedicating my life to yeah. tell people about the power of food mm -hmm. that it can fix what ails you. And he's not kidding. It really can. And I think yeah. in my own, my own situation, how many illnesses did this head off for me? Was right. I going to get um, prostate cancer or was I going to have heart issues or was I going to become a diabetic? Um, what other cancers or tumors are growing in me right now that are not going to bubble to the surface because I'm treating the rest of my body with the best food possible yeah. to keep them at bay until I die of yeah. probably getting run over by a public transit bus on my bicycle when I'm 105. <laughs> yes. They'll go, is that Mitch under there? Yep. That's his helmet with a little mirror. <laughs> oh, yes. He probably should have been riding the bus. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> at 105 maybe but that's still impressive so that's a great way to go out if you're 105 <laughs> that's what i'm hoping yeah no i don't i I, yeah. I it won't be my fault right yep which which doctor was it uh uh what's his name from chicago maybe when he's yeah. an african-american doctor and he says i know i'm gonna die one day i just don't want it to be my fault yes yeah and i totally agree and yep. i that i've adopted that for myself yeah <laughs> Well, and so many of those things that you were talking about, type two diabetes, cancer, heart disease, a lot of those things are quote, we've normalized when we get older. Yeah. Oh, that's just what happens. And, yeah. and not all cancers, some cancers, but still you have to think about that. Like, what am I putting into my body and how is this impacting my longevity or my health or yeah. being able to ride my bike to work or do all these things? Well, not only, uh, we've normalized it, but we expect it. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. I'm probably going to get prostate cancer yep that's how i'm probably gonna go mm -hmm. no you yeah. don't have to you just eat the right foods and man this thing runs like a like a swiss watch it's crazy yes uh and you know it makes you regular <laughs> yep which is a huge thing i mean we've again normalized going to the bathroom every few days fiber is a gift yeah it really is yeah it really and i think that i think that um Two things you're going to bubble to the surface in the next five to 10 years in the medical industry. They're going to be forced into paying attention to this because uh, our, our poop's going to be studied yep. and our emotions are going to be studied because this, in my opinion, fixes or helps to fix depression and keeps you away from medication because you have no other alternative other than to be in a good mood. Yeah. On, yeah. On vegetables. Yeah, it's true. Well, especially when you're regular, who's not happy when they're regular? Like that's such oh, a great man. feeling. <laughs> I don't, this might be too much information, but when I leave the bathroom, my two, three or four times a day, sometimes I feel high. Like oh, I've yeah. just smoked a joint. I'm not kidding. I'm like floating and I'm like, I'm in such a good mood and I'm really glad to see people. And I'm like, I feel like saying <laughs> you should have been in there. Yes. Yeah. That was incredible. Because <laughs> most people coming out come out of it and they're it's not a pleasant experience or it's not a pleasant pleasant experience during the situation that's oh, going on. Yeah. Yeah. And I only use three pieces of paper. Okay. This <laughs> I'm a dietitian and we'll, we're going to talk about poop because there is such a thing as ghost poop where you don't need to wipe. And that's a common thing, especially among ghost vegans. Poop. Yes. I've where, never like, heard of that. Non-existent, basically. Like you didn't even have one. And a lot of vegans, plant-based eaters experience that because it just comes out so seamlessly and you don't need to do much. That's so funny. I was thinking about a joke. I, we haven't mentioned it, but I'm also a budding stand-up comedian. Yes. And I started when I was 50. I'm 58 now. And so I'm always writing jokes. And I was thinking about, I, I should really dig into this plant-based stuff and try to write like a set, like do five minutes on nothing but plant-based. and. I was thinking about the bathroom and the toilet paper and I don't use, I don't use very much toilet paper. Sometimes I don't use any at all. Yeah. And you might say, how do you know? Mirrors. I don't really use mirrors. Uh, yeah, I, just thought, I, know. <laughs> I just thought it'd be a good joke, you know? 
Yeah. You know. And there's no smoke, but definitely mirrors. Yeah. <laughs> No, I don't know. I might try yeah. that joke. Hey, <laughs> See, hey. it made you giggle. So. I know. I mean, you have, I'm sure you have, like, with your industry, you have to try things out and just see how they land. Oh, yeah. I, I'm going to open mic tonight. You are. So. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Well, I do want to hear about your plant-based journey because you gave me a preview in our messaging, but I kind of want the story on, like, how that transpired for you. Sure. I, I Really briefly, I'd like to go back to... Early in my radio career, I tried Nutrisystem, thanks to the radio, yeah. and I lost about 20 pounds. It was really interesting reading pa or eating packaged food. And, uh, but then, you know, that trade ran out at the radio station. And so then I kind of drifted away from that. Around 2000, I got on to whole grains, which was whole wheat, hard winter wheat, rye, and was not supposed to eat refined carbohydrates. So I cut out fast food and ate those grains. It worked. I lost weight, but I didn't look good. I had bad color. I had enormous poops that were yeah. sometimes painful. So I did that for like 10 years because it was controlling my weight. Then I crept back up in weight. Then in 2011, my ex-wife and I went to a St. Patrick's Day party. We attend each year. And we see this couple and they look amazing. We're like, what did you do? And they said, we went gluten free. Oh, wow. Like, What's gluten? <laughs> right. And they said, it's wheat. We quit all wheat products. So, okay. So over the next two weeks, my uh, wife educated herself. And during that two weeks, I went into the half bath upstairs. I remember I'm fat. I feel useless i look at myself in the mirror i say you're fat and useless and that's all you're going to be for the rest of your life mitch uh, yeah a couple days later gretchen asked me and my 13 year old son our son do you guys want to go gluten-free with me absolutely Wow. because i have nothing else to lose i lose 45 pounds and i feel like superman it was amazing yeah. and i'm fit and i look good and my color's back and i'm just and I feel like this is a new lease on life. Mm -hmm. And from that day forward until today continued, people do, do not need wheat. There's other food. That takes us to 2018, it's 4th of July. Yep. I'm in Lake City, Michigan with my family. And Uncle Dave, always been a little out there with his thinking sometimes, always meaning well, just sure. willing to look at other avenues of thinking. And he says to me, he's looking really good. And he has become pretty staunch vegetarian. He says, people aren't supposed to eat meat. It doesn't work in us. Makes us too wow. acidic. We're supposed to be more alkaline. Hmm. So I said, well, interesting. I didn't dig in anything he was reading or studying. I said, I'll throw you a bone. I'll only eat meat four days a week. He says, well, there you go. Let me know how you feel. Wow. So I did that for a few months and realized meat's not that important. I'm going to, I'm going to cut back to three days a week. So I did. And then in the winter of 2019, I watched five documentaries. Oh boy. And February 2nd, that was it. I'm done. I'll never eat meat, dairy, eggs, or seafood ever again. Wow. And I haven't looked back and I lost another 35 pounds. And now I'm right down to like I'm five nine and about 132 and I feel so good and agile and I feel like an athlete at 58. Yeah. Wow. I mean I would assume like better than you felt in probably a long time. <sighs> yeah. It was like it was like uh gluten free was here, yeah. plant based is here. It's just off the chart. You know, 10 years ago when I started plant based, there was uh there was no products. You couldn't do anything. Well, guess what there was? It was the produce section. And that's where I've been for three years. And that along with seeds and nuts, that's all you need. Yeah. You don't need, I don't need morning star sausage that when you're done cooking it, there's a half inch of oil in the pan. I just eat my, eat my plant-based items yeah. instead of produced items. Yep. It's true. I mean, you truly don't need that stuff. Your body can no. thrive without it. And wow. I can't tell people. In fact, that's one thing I want to ask you. How can I better 
bring people in instead of mm. push them away with this way of thinking. I want to be their example and I want them to go, yeah. oh, I'm going to do what Mitch is doing. Instead, they go, Mitch is crazy. Yep. Yep. I'm going to Arby's. Right. You know? Yep. I mean, honestly, Mitch, you're doing it right now. Share one, sharing your story and two, being a walking example of how freaking good you feel. Because I think eventually people are going to come to realize when they're in their late fifties, sixties, that their start did not feel so good. The way that they ate yep. maybe is quote catching up to them mm -hmm. and they're kind of reevaluating what it is they're putting. They're going to think of you. They're not going to probably right. think of anything else or anyone else, but the no. fact that you're living this lifestyle and you're so energetic, you feel like an athlete. Like, <laughs> I mean, that, that shows, I feel like that proof is more powerful than anything else. It was funny. I wrote, uh, I have a once a week paper route. Okay. I do on my bike, the little, little free newspaper. It's almost six miles and I love it because it gets me out, gets me oh, some yeah. fresh air. Started it with my son to give him a work ethic years ago. And now he's in the Navy. And so anyhow, I have these newspapers left over. So I threw uh, the two bundles that I had left over to take to Goodwill so they can wrap glass in them. Mm -hmm. So I do that. And then I went to the, uh, the vet to pick up a six pound bag of cat food for my cat. I thought, oh, I'm going to go down this road for a ride, kind of snake around and get back home. Anyhow, I wind up going until dark. I get home. I've gone 34.8 miles. Wow. On my big balloon tire bike with six right. pound bag of cat food, steel framed, heavy bike. And I'm out just trucking and I would have kept going, but it was dark. Oh, yeah. And like, this is not normal for a 58 year old no. to ride a bike 35 miles. Mm -mm. No. And, and it's like, you... I'd invite anybody to do that. Right. Right. Exactly. And when you think about even the people that you're working with, I know I evaluated this a lot when people kind of like, oh, well, there's the plant based girl. And it's like, I, you know, you kind of, it's hard not to be judgmental because you want people to feel well. You want them to also eat well. You want them to live a long and happy life. But if you think about some, even your coworkers, your colleagues who eat, who knows what, yeah. and I would imagine they're not lifting and slinging around patients like you are, or using the Hoyer lift like you are. <laughs> well, the Hoyer does most of the lifting. Yeah, that's true. For me. That's the beauty of, of a Hoyer lift. <laughs> um, well, people probably don't realize I'm also a caregiver. I work at a brain injury facility and oh, yeah. that's where I get to use the Hoyer lift. But uh, yeah, people do, my coworkers do eat a lot of fast food and a lot of refined carbohydrates. And they look at my bowl of food, which is this big green brown bowl of weird looking food, which I say, I'm a little extreme. I'm more like a bachelor of doing this. So I just throw everything in the bowl, mix it up. I eat half for lunch and half for dinner and an apple and an orange after each of those meals. And they just like, whatever, Mitch. <laughs> I said, and then I'll show them a picture of a more civilized vegan dinner, which is a nice pile of chickpeas that's seasoned, some avocado, some sauerkraut, maybe some lettuce that's been seasoned up, you know, and, and with some salsa on or something. I said, and this is more like what you yep. should probably eat yep. instead yep. of throwing everything in a pile like I <laughs> Yes. <laughs> but so that food works for me. Right. Yeah. It works for you. And I think again, like you're, you're setting an example and if people want to come around to it, I think people get really turned off when you tell them what they should or shouldn't be doing. And totally. also people get turned off when it's like, you're showing them, you know, videos of animals being harmed, which is, has been oh, shown yeah. to not be maybe the most helpful way of converting people to veganism or plant-based eating. And it, no. although it can be a great tool, the example that you set is the most powerful tool. Yeah, it's like a tool with a cattle prod. Yeah, yeah. Not right. the best to show those videos. No. Yeah. <laughs> but I I uh I, I do try to do that to show an example. And then I buy extra books oh, and yeah. I'll loan them out. And if I don't get them back, then that's fine. I've spent five dollars, seven dollars, ten dollars. That's okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I don't really care if I get them back because I love the information I get from them. And then I want that person to read anything in it you know yeah yeah uh, and i i've got a list of some of the books that i've read if you want to hear a few of yeah them. please yeah please share them i mean just for the just for mentioning it how not to die by dr gregor 
Uh, I enjoyed the microbiome solution by Robin Chutkin. <gasps> yes, she's amazing. Yeah, very good. The only thing I disagreed with her was she says it's okay to eat coconut oil. Oh, and coconut okay. oil is 17 grams of, of saturated fat in one tablespoon. That's too much. Yeah. Just don't do it. Just you can use it as a skin lotion, but don't there you eat, go. Don't eat <laughs> coconut oil. I uh, eat for late by eat for life by Dr. Joel Furman. Yes. Uh, Diet for a New America by John Robbins. Hmm. Um, the plant based athlete. That was a good one. That was really good. Yes. Yeah, Own Your Health by Glenn Merzer. Have you heard of that? No, one? I haven't heard of that one. No. He mixes some humor into it, which is really cool. Really? Huh? Yeah. And Your Body and Balance by Dr. Neil Barnard. Okay. Yep. I've heard of that one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Those are great. But I love all those books. And and I'm about to read uh, Fast Food Genocide. Oh, I haven't I haven't read that one. Yeah, that's a Dr. Furman book too. Okay. Okay. How processed food is killing us and what to do about it. Yeah. It's so good to educate yourself, especially when you're plant-based or vegan, because people like we're talking about do have a lot of questions, which, and so it's helpful to give them a response or maybe pass along a book, but it's also yep. so helpful to kind of remind yourself why you're doing what you're doing. It, 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 you're right. That's, that's perfect because it is, it's, it's like a support group. It's like a fuel yes. to, to, to power me on this journey. And that's what podcasts did uh, in that winter of 2019 into 2020, which I went plant-based on February 2nd, 2020. That was oh. the, that was like the day the, the pandemic started. Wow. And uh, so it was, it was like, this is ground zero and I'm starting this plant-based journey. Yes. What a trip. Right. But I had these podcasts. I had your podcast. I had uh, Switch for Good podcast. That's a great one. Plant Strong. Yep. Is great. The exam room with Dr. Barnard and Chuck Carroll. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, I, I wrote a list of some others of my doctor, uh, Veggie Doctor Radio. Yeah, she's wonderful. Yep. Uh, Health and Mora with Dr. Lori Marbus. Mm -hmm. Be Green with Amy. And I like the starch solution with Healthy yes. Emmy. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Nutritionfacts.org with yep. Dr. Gregor. Um, yeah, I the podcasts have been my support group because I didn't really go find friends. Yeah. I live in the thumb of Michigan, which this is like, you know, cattle country out here. And mm -hmm. we grow soybeans, corn, and wheat. That's what yep. we grow. And we feed it all the animals. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sounds familiar. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, that's not really how it should go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. She cut the animals out and feed the vegetables to the people. Right. Cut out the middleman. It's just a, such a waste of efficiency. <laughs> it really is. It's yeah. it's sad. And we've got a lot of figuring out to do in a short amount of time. Yes, we do. Because uh, the environment's just, you know, do the math. It's not going to hold up. Yep. No, not at the trajectory we're headed. And, you know, one thing I want to mention about the environment and a cool side effect of being plant-based is I noticed it when I went gluten-free that the garbage can quit getting so full so fast yes and that was with gluten-free then when i went plant-based i said I, I, no literally put the garbage to the curb like three times in three years i got because my big can can get filled mostly with uh with plastic wrappings i'll stuff it in a potato chip oh. bag and then i'll wrap it up really good oh, yeah. because they don't recycle that stuff yeah and, and but i recycle everything else in the green tub but I don't produce any garbage anymore. So that right there in a, if you look at that as far as the environment, yep. that's fixing a huge problem mm -hmm. Absolutely. by reducing garbage. Yeah. I know we talk all the time here. I live in Durham, North Carolina, how we wish, because recycling is every other week and trash is once a week. And we're like, we wish it was the opposite because it's teaching <laughs> us to like have a lot of garbage and not a lot of recycling. So yeah. Yeah, we don't comp, I mean, we have composting services here, but it's not like a mandatory thing. Like it is in some places, I think in Canada, it might be. And yeah. I, just, I wish that was a more popular thing as well. I collect my compost and I give it to a, a, a woman that makes her own dirt for her flowers. Oh yes. That's so great. I just 
throw it into an old cat food bag and it fills up and I'll take it over and all mine is cut up small. And she's like, this is the, this is the best garbage ever. <laughs> oh yes. I know when you compost, when you recycle and when you're eating plant-based, it, it's true. Your trash is so minimal. I, I yeah. completely agree with you there. Is that reducing our carbon footprint? Heck yes, it is. Is that what that is? Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. It's a, what a cool, what a cool uh, side effect. Yeah, that, it really that is. That is. Yeah. So when you were watching those documentaries, 2019 into 2020, was there anything that stood out documentary wise that you were like, wow, like this is just mind blowing. Oh uh, yeah. It was just the evidence. Yeah. It was just the evidence that, that here's people that, that li like forks overnight. I look, can, let me lay them on you. Okay. I want to hear them. Here's the, here's the top five that I watched that made the biggest difference, probably pretty close to this order. Now I will say with the caveat of, Forks over knives. I did watch that when it first came out in 2011. You did, and my mind was like, "Oh, that's interesting," but it didn't wasn't getting through that wall yep. of meat in my yep. brain. Mm -hmm. So I took it in, but I guess stored it away and didn't really think much about it because I would think I was too much of a chicken wing guy back yep. then. Um, so I watched uh, Game Changers. Mm. That was huge. What the health? Yep. Both were available on Netflix and Forks Over Knives and then Cowspiracy mm. and Eating Animals. Oh, Eating yes. Animals is a little, little rough to watch, but it's we should know this stuff. We should yeah. know the quote unquote atrocities that are going on inside yeah. these factory farms where they are literally treated like cardboard boxes. You mm -hmm. can beat them down to nothing and then throw them away. Yeah. And it's really, it's really sad. If people knew, yeah, they would, they would think twice about eating meat because they would go, I th it's like I walk around with guilt-free eating that I feel good that nothing had to die just so I can live. Yeah. I feel really good about myself in terms of you know, something didn't have to get strung up and do all the things they had to do just yep. so I could, so I could be satiated. I've got, I got flaxseed, ground chia, you know, ground flaxseed, chia seed and hemp seed and walnuts and sunflower seeds, pecans and pumpkin seeds. That's, those are my omega threes and my fatty acids that I need that I would be getting from meat. Right, right. I've got that stuff. I throw that in my oatmeal and into my cruciferous vegetables every day. And look at me. Yeah. I feel like I'm in my 20s. Which is incredible, especially being 58. And you're right. Yeah. Like, it's such a, a kind way of living, a much more compassionate way. And I think it's it's truly aligned with when we were kids. And I think if we had the choice or if we knew what was going on behind the scenes with the food that was coming in front of us, I think yeah. there's no way in heck any child would choose that path of eating right. meat. Well, it's all, I, I don't want to go off on a tangent like it's a uh, conspiracy and all that, but we were just raised in basically a fraud Yeah, in, in yeah. the sense that, that we're supposed to eat meat and we're supposed to eat wheat and we're supposed to drink milk to be healthy. Yeah, And it's not the truth. It is wrong. And it's too, uh, support industries that want to make money. And that's it. And bonus, if you eat that stuff, then you have to go to the doctor. Right. And bonus, you have to get on far on pharmaceuticals and bonus. You may have to go to a hospital one day yeah. and hopefully you will maintain an illness that will last for years while you're continuing to eat this garbage. Right. And uh, then you'll die but then we'll just move on to the next customers. Yeah. And and that's the stuff that really bugs me into like I remember that first weeks of going gluten free driving down main street and looking at the restaurants and it's like the world was closing in on me it's like every single place is wheat and cheese and and it's just like they were all trying to get me. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> like, that's what it felt like. Yep. It's like the only place I'm safe is the produce section. <laughs> it's true though. And it's hard not to go down that rabbit hole of like, is there some conspiracy going on that like, that, well, I what, do you, what, what, this what, what do you want to think? What do you, what do you expect to think after you make the switch? You're going, yeah, 
that's really feels like what's going on here because yep. the, the standard American diet is really not good for people. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's sort of like the standard American acceptance of ill health until you die. Yeah. And goodbye to your last 10 years, they're going to be laid up and suffering with emphysema and, and you know, Alzheimer's. And mm -hmm. I'm not going there because I'm eating my cup of blueberries a day and I'm getting those seeds and nuts and cru cruciferous vegetables and beans. Yeah. And and some rice and just feeling really good. Yeah. Well, I think too, especially when you work in healthcare, you see that a lot more often, even in nursing homes, you know, people are there for, like you're saying, sometimes even a decade oh, yeah. on their deathbed. And yep. you're just like, when people say, well, I'd rather eat whatever I, you know, eat whatever I want and then, you know, die happy. It's like a lot of these people, I mean, are not dying happy, which is really, really unfortunate. Yeah. It's like, are you happy now with severe diabetes or would yeah. you rather in about three weeks have lost maybe five or 10 pounds and getting off your medication and feeling really good? Like you'd like to mm -hmm. walk, yeah, you know, or, or do you want to just stay here in your chair? And that's the one thing that bugs me about uh, my job. I love my job and I love where I work, but I really wish that that they would come on board with the 2023 version of diabetes and healthcare yeah. through food instead yep. of the 2010 or 2000 version of food, you know, yeah. because uh, there is a better way and they should know it by now that the curtain has been pulled back. You know, the rug is lifted. Yeah, We know this, the information's out there and Dr. Gregor's book is also right there. Yeah, it is. He's a regular doctor telling us we should eat plants. Mm -hmm. And he has studies upon studies and randomized controlled double blind placebo trials that show that these 5,000 people ate this way and these 5,000 people ate this way and they don't have heart disease. Right, right. No, exactly. They plants. Yep. Uh. <laughs> Very aggravating. <laughs> it is. But you're right. You said something earlier about like uh, mental health disorders, cognitive disorders, how more and more research. I mean, again, it's a great time to be alive when you're plant based because more and more research is coming out showing that there is a, a link between what we eat and its impact on our mental health, on depression, anxiety, on different cognitive disorders like dementia, Alzheimer's. And it's 100 percent cool to see. Yeah. And, and like, uh, do you know that 90 percent of our serotonin? comes from our gut. Oh, That's our happy, ooh. our happy hormone in our brain. Yeah. It comes from the gut, goes up and it tells the brain, hey, things are really good. You should be in a good mood. Like I'm a pretty happy guy. I'm in a good mood most days. But think about two thousand think about February and March of 2020. Right. No more friends, no more activities, yeah. no more concerts, no more, no nothing. And I'm still in a good mood. Yeah. How is this working? I had, uh, uh, as a comedian, I had produced comedy shows and I had four comedy shows in the barrel ready to go. And I was advertising for two of them. All of them got canceled. Wow. Yeah. Which should have sent me into a spiral. Mm -hmm. I was in a good mood because I, I was going plant-based and I was feeling really good. Yeah. So I, that's like that's like evidence, right? You know, that's a randomized controlled study in itself. <laughs> yes. Hey, and in a one, and sometimes all you need. Yeah. 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 So it's, uh, it's just so powerful. I wish more yeah. people would do it. I wish like people in their eighties and nineties are making the switch. Yep. They're seeing results and they're feeling mm -hmm. better. They're losing weight. Yes. I had a great conversation with a guy at a doctor's office the other day out in the waiting room where he was waiting on his wife and I was waiting on a client and, uh, He's 86, looked really good, but he was overweight. Mm -hmm. Wife, her mental capacities are starting to fail. Yeah. And I says, yeah, man, you got to lean into those vegetables. Got to get her a cup of blueberries every day and get her some seeds and some nuts. And he's like, she doesn't like that stuff. I said, well, get it into a smoothie. Yes. And he says, oh yeah, we like smoothies. I said, there, you can put your spinach, your seeds, your nuts, everything in that. She won't even know the difference. The blueberries... She won't even know the difference. She'll be eating right. goodness that will treat her brain good yeah. and help you lose some weight. And he's like, yeah, he was 
he was latching oh. on to quite a bit. I wrote down Dr. Greger's book and yes. another cookbook I haven't got yet, but intend on is Plant You. Yes, that one looks amazing. Yeah, I don't know who does it, but uh, or who wrote it, but it looks super simple. And that's yes. what I liked about it. very simple recipes. Yep. Yeah. Well, so even that conversation in the waiting room, you never know. You planted the seed. You never know if that you know if it's going to grow, how it's going to grow. So again, that's kind of what we're doing with what we're doing. The little pieces of contact that we make with people, you yep. just never know what is going to happen with those conversations. Yeah, that's another thing that makes you special because you're a really good delivery person for this. Be, you know, partially through your kindness and your sincerity. I'm not just trying to kiss up or anything. I'm just <laughs> saying that those two things make it really good as opposed yeah. to a, you know, bulldog, you know, Joe yep. Rogan view of it. Right. You could do that, but you're doing it through a, a kinder way of of uh, saying, "Hey, this really works, and you should really yeah. give it a shot." And here's some people with some stories. So, yeah, um, I, I well, love that. Yeah. And, and I like your partner. What's her name? Katie. Katie. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. She's she's, she's wonderful. Cool. I like her her uh, goofy laugh. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, she's, <laughs> she's absolutely wonderful. We've been working together for a few years now and I'm just, I'm so grateful that she's part of my team. Yeah. 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 That's, I think it was a wise decision bringing her on. I do too. Yes. Yeah. Cause she was a client and then a coworker. <laughs> exactly. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good move. She, yeah. She's just, I mean, she was an excellent client because she was very teachable, coachable. And then she just, I know that she aligns with a lot of things that I believe when it comes to plant-based eating, intuitive eating. And so it was like a, a no brainer basically. Yeah. That's so cool. Well, thanks for coming on. I mean, I really do appreciate it. So it, this was just such a wonderful candid conversation and I always appreciate that as well. So I just appreciate you being transparent with everything. Oh, thanks. And thank you for, for doing what you do and keep it going every week. And just think about people like me that that need your support yeah. when I'm doing my food, when I'm chopping up my head of cabbage, my, my broccoli and my cauliflower, well, chopping it all up to put it in the, the, the salad spinner to, to spin it. I'm listening to you and you help me get my food prepped on each week. So I know that That's I'm good. fortifying myself through, through the week. So well, I appreciate you're the, that. You're the, you, you're the soundtrack to my food prep. Wonderful. And I love the food preps. That's like a match made in heaven right there. It's great. <laughs> that sounds like a really mushy song and a vegetable yep. record. <laughs> I a soundtrack to my food prep. <laughs> well, I, I tell uh, tell Katie. Yep, Katie. Yep, I'll tell her. Oh, Katie Mitchgill said hi. And thank okay. you so much for having me. Yep, absolutely. Thank you for coming on. I appreciate it. And I'll um, tag you and share this. You know, you can, you can share however you want um, on social media and everything. So. Oh, yeah. And I we didn't talk about how people can reach me if anybody ever oh, wanted to. Yeah, yeah. If, if there's some old person that wants to talk to me, I will talk. Mainly, uh, I, I'm, I'm on Facebook with the messenger. They could send a message through there. Okay. Uh, other than that, my email is the, is the other way, which is mjgill2002 at yahoo.com. Because I really don't do social media that much. I, yeah. I just work and... And listen to podcasts and do food prep. Yep. And ride your bike and try to get hit by a bus. Yep. And write, write jokes here and there. And yeah. Stuff. Yes. Nice. Well, <laughs> so, good. Well, uh, thank you for sharing that. We'll include it in the show notes and everything. That way, if people do want to connect with you, because you never know. Again, planning. Absolutely. Seeds. Anybody yeah. out there, just watch those documentaries, read those books. Edu it's all about educating yourself. Yeah. And trust me, I'm not a doctor. I like to say that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mitch. Well, it was so good to talk to you. I will catch you later. And I thank you for the listener and for those watching for tuning in today. We really appreciate you. You know, 10 years ago when I started plant-based, there was uh, there was no products. You couldn't do anything. Well, guess what there was? It was the produce section. And that's where I've been for three years. And that along with seeds and nuts, that's all you need. Yeah. You don't need, I don't need Morningstar sausage that when you're done cooking it, there's a half inch of oil in the pan. I just eat my eat my plant-based items yeah. instead of produced items. Yep. It's true. I mean, you truly don't need that stuff. Your body can no. thrive without it. Until next time, keep thriving.